Let's now talk about Apple Scripts. So, Apple Scripts can be executed by DJ and DJ is actually scriptable. So let's first talk about DJ being scriptable. I'm going to right click here and show DJ in the Finder. And what I want to do to see what DJ can do is I want to drag it over Script Editor, which you normally find in your Applications folder, Utilities folder. I've got one in the dock here. So if I drag this over, I'll see the Dictionary of Commands. And we have the Radiologic DJ Suite here uh, with a bunch of things that you can tell DJ to do or functions to get information from DJ for more complex Apple scripts. So, for instance, adding tracks to the top of the queue, the bottom of the queue, turning auto on and off, ducking, fade finish, uh, line in on and off, muting the whole players, uh, pressing any palette button. Uh, so there are several things here you can do. So you could use this, for instance, if you happen to have uh, some other system uh, of switching or control, and that system allows uh, Apple Scripts to actually be run to do things. You could tell DJ to do things that way. Uh, or uh, you could have DJ itself run the script that tells DJ what to do uh, under some error conditions or uh, other circumstances. So with that, let's look at another part, and that is DJ actually executing scripts. So if you double click a track, you do get the track actions, and in there, besides the interrupt and ID and line in, on or off, and preference set, you also have the ability to set Apple scripts. These Apple scripts fire right when the track first starts, so you know. But when we look in this menu, we also see that the only things in here are DJ event Apple scripts. Well, DJ event Apple scripts are actually special things that are fired for the conditions that they show. They're here in case for some reason you wanted to reuse them when attaching them to tracks. But generally you're going to find you're not going to be using these DJ uh, event Apple scripts. You're going to be creating your own, naming them what you want, and uh, putting the functions in that you want. So let's go look at the Radiologic folder and we'll see where these scripts are. So in the Music Radiologic folder, find Scripts, and there we see all the DJ event scripts. So let's talk about what some of these DJ event scripts do. Um, one important one uh, that a lot of people like to use for publishing is the DJ event that now playing changed. So what is published just changed, this Apple script will fire. And one of the uses for that is to upload files uh, such as um, metadata and art. And there's a little example here that shows you how to upload data. You would just remove the comments by removing the first two dashes. If I compiled it right now, you'd see that the other lines are still comments and this is now a working uh, Apple script. I'm going to revert this because that's uh, just placeholder data. Um, you can also have it uh, do certain things for certain error conditions. For instance, if it's playing silence, uh, you can have it uh, remedy that in some way, like skip to the next track uh, would be something you could do. That's what this happens to do here. Tell application Radiologic DJ start program, which means start the next track and program. Uh, let's skip this track and go on to the next track. That would be one way to remedy it. When it's remedied, the broke silence fires. Uh, if there's any reason to use that, that is here. And there's another one for when the track is logged in case you want something to happen in regard of publishing. Uh, but here's a fun one. Here's uh, This remedies a situation. Let's say uh, if you scheduled uh, incorrectly or your schedule failed for some reason and uh, you're not around to see what's happening and DJ runs out of tracks in queue. This is a really nice one to have. Uh, DJ event program queue empty in 30 seconds. That gives us time enough to actually do something about the error condition that is impending. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to remove these and I'm going to set this up as an example. So I've uncommented that and now this is telling, under this condition, tell application Radiologic DJ, cue the iTunes playlist to, you know, from iTunes to uh, DJ's queue, and that playlist should be emergency playlist. So 
I'm actually going to save that one. Now we need to go and make an emergency playlist in DJ. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to take our rotation playlist which has 150. Well, that's too much. I don't want to bring 150 tracks into DJ just because of that error situation. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new smart playlist. And I'm going to say, uh, pick from the playlist, playlist, uh, Radiologic, or what did I have it called? Trance Rotation. Um, but limit it to, we'll do 15 minutes at a time selected, I don't know, uh, we could say anything we want, we'll say random. And I like to convert this over to that view. You can see that you have just under 15 minutes of tracks there. And we want to rename this to be emergency playlist. Let me just go back to the script to confirm that is actually what it is. I believe it is. Emergency playlist. It is. And now we can actually simulate the uh, error condition and see what happens. So for that, what I want to do is um, remove some of these tracks. Actually, let's remove all the tracks. Okay, so we're still three minutes away from the error situation, or actually two and a half minutes away. I'm going to advance up here a little bit and uh, actually watch this occur. We'll put it up a little bit further and we'll see if it works. There you see it actually changed to the emergency playlist here and brought in these tracks. And if for some reason uh, we still don't have tracks from scheduler successfully um, it will just keep adding these tracks and because we use a rotating playlist you're not going to hear the same songs from an emergency static playlist over and over again these are all getting marked as played uh, so let's see the one that just started here um, should be now removed from our emergency playlist and it is and the next one comes up so you actually maintain in this emergency condition you still maintain um, some rotation there. So, so again, well, what you would do is uh, any Apple scripts you want to write, you would write them, you'd save them by any name you want, you put them in here, you could attach them uh, to any track, and uh, generally you're not going to find yourself attaching a manually like this, but you want to have the ability to uh, edit something that is going on here. Uh, I'm just going to take one of these DJ events and set that for now, just to show you that it gives an indicator here of an AS, meaning Apple script, is attached to this track and it will fire at that time. You can reuse the DJ event Apple scripts. That's why they're here, but generally you may find uh, that you want a dedicated one for some specific thing you want to do. Let me show you back in Scheduler as well that most of the time when you're going to be setting an Apple script to a track, you're really going to be doing it at a scheduled time. And so certain commands in Scheduler will allow you to do that. The fill command will allow you to do it. The pick command will allow you to do it. And the time command will allow you to do it. Uh, in the case of the fill command, if you put an Apple script to a fill command, it's going to be added to the first track of the fill command. If the command does not succeed for some reason, you're not going to have the Apple script, so just be aware of that. And the last little bit about Apple scripts is the pre and post schedule. I show this in another video as well that you can actually, from the same folder, uh, create and choose an Apple script to run before scheduling and after scheduling. And it's not up to me to, for, to figure out what you might want to do at that time. Maybe download a file or I don't know what action. Uh, but these options are available to you here. And that's about it on Apple scripting.